chat groove lab. Hey dudes and dudettes, this is Harry Bomchak coming to you with a quick video tutorial on Ableton Live and this video goes out especially to the drummers. So the question for me was, how can I replace some of this extra gear that I and most other drummers I know uh, bring to work? And that would be a metronome, you know, something like uh, the Yamaha click station. Uh, a controller, a foot switch controller, or some other controller to comfortably start and stop the click on stage. And how awesome would it be if we never had to write, you know, those handwritten set lists with all this additional informations on it that we need on stage, just to have to rewrite it again every time that the artist changes uh, the order of the songs on the gig. And maybe we can even replace uh, the good old lead sheet. Uh, what I definitely wanted to do is I wanted to put all this stuff into the one device that I'm carrying around when I go to work anyways, just to have it in the backstage or whatever, and that's my laptop. So so what I did is I built a live set in Ableton Live 9, and I call it the Boomchak Setlist and Click Track Set. All right, so before we have a closer look at the live set now, let me just quickly explain whom I actually built this particular version of this uh, idea for. Uh, he's an artist from the Netherlands. His name is J.B. Myers. Uh, he's a guitar player, songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, and most of all, he's quite a huge producer in Holland. He's from Amsterdam, and I've been uh, working with him since 2009 when I recorded the drums for his first solo album, Catching Ophelia. And since then, uh, I've been playing some live shows with him, uh, sometimes with uh, long periods of time between those shows. And um, so that's actually how I came up with uh, the idea to that Ableton project. Um, so if you like the, the little snippets of the music that you hear in this video tutorial, um, you should definitely go ahead and check out jbmyers.com. He's a great guy, his music is awesome, and it's definitely worth checking out. So we have four tracks here, song, tempo, sticks, and action. And all the clips in the uh, tempo, sticks, and action tracks, they're actually all empty clips. They only serve as some kind of a spreadsheet. They only transport the written information of those clips. The clips in the song track, though, if I double click on one of them, you can see uh, there's uh, audio waveforms in there. So those are actually mp3 files of the recordings of the songs that we are actually about to play on stage. So I warped them all to have them tempo flexible and so they're ready to go. Uh, if we have a look at the tempo track here, you can see there's a Max MIDI device in there, which you can download for free from uh, maxforlife.com. It's a graphic metronome and I simply put that in there because I like to have a visual feedback of the metronome of the click. Um, the sticks track uh, gives me all the information for each song on what kind of sticks do I need to use. Is it uh, brushes, hot rods, mallets, uh, drum uh, sticks or whatever. And additionally it tells me if I need to prepare my drum kit in a special way for, you know, for a particular song like putting a cymbal chain on my right cymbal or using a towel on the snare drum or putting a tambourine on the hi-hat and whatnot, you know. The action uh, track um, just tells me everything about how a song starts. Am I starting it? Is somebody else starting it? And if somebody else is starting it, how is he starting it? And um, to make that whole thing even more uh, visually transparent, if you will, I've used some colors for the individual songs. I use three different ones. The orange uh, songs are actually the songs that are to be counted off by the drummer, in that case by me. And uh, the white songs are just the opposite. They're just songs that are definitely not to be counted off by the drummer. They start in some other way. And uh, the bluish grayish songs at the bottoms um, at the bottom are just uh, indicating, okay, those are the encores. In the master section, I have just renamed all the scenes to the song names. And additionally, I have typed in uh, the tempo of each song. 
and the time signature for each song. So if you want to um, write in the tempo, you just type in the number, for example, 95, and then uh, add the letters BPM for beats per minute. And uh, to write in your uh, time signature, you just divide the two numbers with a slash. So if you have a 4-4 four, four song, you would write 4-4. Four four. And if you have a song in 6-8, you would write something like 6-8. Um, what happens if you do this kind of renaming of scenes in Ableton Live is you automate those scenes to those values and that is actually indicated by those triangle fire scene buttons um, turning orange. What's also really neat is um, you can just swap songs uh, within the set list really easily. So you just you know grab a song and put it to another position in your set and um, so you're really flexible with this and whenever the artist decides even on short notice that he uh, wants to play a different order of songs tonight um, it's just really easy to uh, to edit that within you know seconds even right before the show so it's uh, no big deal okay so how do I control this setup on stage I'm using a MIDI fighter 3d MIDI controller it's from DJ Tech Tools, and it's really an, a really awesome controller. It can do many more things that I'm actually showing in this video. Um, I chose it for this purpose because it's small, it's robust. You can hit the buttons, you know, really hard, even with a drumstick in your hand. And most of all, because you can assign uh, individual colors to all the buttons. So that's really helpful on a dark stage. Uh, when you just need to have a quick look and then know where you want to which button you want to hit i midi mapped uh, uh you know the buttons to uh, some parameters in life if you don't know you just do that by uh using the uh the blue midi box in the uh, upper right corner of your screen or you can uh, use apple m and then you are in midi mapping mode and then you can uh, tell the program uh, which button should control which parameter and uh, let me just show you which uh, parameters I've um, mapped here so um, with these two buttons here the two uh, purple ones I can scroll through the concert that's scene up and scene down um, the uh, the green one here is my start button but that's actually not the global transport, but it is the start scene button or fire scene button, which you can find uh, if you're in MIDI map mode uh, down in the corner here, also together with the uh, scene up and down buttons. So if I press that, you can actually hear and uh, also see the visual feedback of the click track. The red button here is uh, my stop clips and also stop transport button. This uh, bright blue button here um, lets me turn on and off the click. It's just a toggle. But mostly when I go on stage, I mean, normally I just have this activated. This is just for, you know, some moments where you just don't want to hear a click. You just want to see it or preview the songs or whatever. So we'll keep this on. And uh, those two buttons here uh, give me some headroom for my click. So you can see here. If I'm using the upper one, I get some more headroom on my click. And actually, this is uh, my normal click level. And uh, yeah, so I could turn the click up. This one here is a tap tempo button. So if I tap it, I can define a new tempo really quickly. And um, that's actually quite helpful, uh, you know, you know, if you're in a rehearsal situation and you need to find a new tempo because the song doesn't feel good in the chosen tempo, so you can easily define a new tempo. And this one actually is uh, the luxury button because that's a momentary switch that activates the song track. And momentary means that uh, the track is only activated as long as I press this yellow button down. As soon as I let go, I do not have uh, this track activated, so I'm not hearing anything. So with this uh, eight or nine buttons, I can comfortably control uh, the set list and click track set. 
and I can preview the songs. So let's just say we're at the beginning of the concert here. So what I could do is I could either just uh, start to click and get into the groove, or I could start to click and have the yellow button pressed down, and I can get a preview of this track. So this way I'm scrolling through the whole concert. Here's the next song. Let go, only have the click, and stop it. All right then, so I'm pretty sure that you got the idea for this uh, Ableton Utility set. Unusual set because it has nothing to do with uh, producing music or uh, sound design or drum programming. But it, as I mentioned a couple of times, it has turned out to be a very useful utility for me. And so I hope this was inspiring for you. And um, thanks for watching. And uh, see you next time. Harry Bomchak, over and out. <laughs>